Okay. So, uh, great pleasure to have the second lecture of uh, Abangel Jorba from uh, Barcelona, speaking to us uh, to, uh, about a little bit more about astrodynamics today, if I'm not wrong. Angel, please. Yes, uh, I mean, I, I have, uh, yesterday somebody told me that some of the slides were not clearly seen, so I've changed a few things. So uh, I hope uh, I hope now will be clearer. So if you can you see it, my screen, well, my my slides, my mouse. Yes. Uh, one second. Once uh, there is an interference, is it possible that it's your telephone next to sometime at Zoom has some weird uh, intersection? If there is too many, there are too many microphones. Only, only one computer with the audio and the other not. This is, uh... yes, Angel? Yes. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, so let me start. Uh, uh, so uh, today I will focus on, I mean, on a different kind of manifolds that they wanted to discuss yesterday. So I, I will uh, discuss the usual stable and unstable manifolds and, and uh, the potential applications of the applications for, for uh, controlling things. So uh, let me start, I mean, simply to make the, the basic, most basic definitions. So I think everybody's familiar with this. So imagine we have a two dimensional uh, matrix to dimensional linear system a differential equation uh, everything is real so we can draw and in this case we assume that the matrix a has two eigenvalues which are real one positive and one negative so if b1 and b2 are the corresponding eigenvectors then we know that the phase space of the system is something like that so everybody is familiar with this and here it's also trivial to define what the stable and unstable manifolds are so they are straight lines going through the origin. The origin is an hyperbolic fixed point or equilibrium point. So, and then uh, if we take the two lines using V1 and V2 as the direction vectors, we get the, the, the invariant matrix. Okay, that's very easy to do, very easy to define. So uh, the question is what happens when we have no linear terms to the plot? So as you can guess, things get deformed. So let me make a second drawing. I mean, that's also a drawing you have seen. Now, for a moment, let's focus on the hyperbolic point, which is this, right? So, well, so at first sight, I mean, if we are very close to the point, we see the same plot as before, the stable and unstable manifolds. But if we enlarge our view, we see that the manifolds are not straight lines, but they bend. So I have to define them in a different way. They are not lines, they are curves. So I have to find a geometrical definition for them. And that's the first um, step. So usually, I mean, there are several ways, of the, but the standard one is uh, this one. So if we have a smooth, as usual, I mean, everything will be smooth. So as, as I mean, if you want analytic, but I mean, uh, as differentiable as I need, okay? No linear system. Now let's jump to n dimensions. And then uh, I have a equilibrium point that I can select at the origin. That's not a restriction at all. I can always do that. And then let's define first what I call the stable set. What is the stable set of zero? It's a set of points such that the orbit that start at these points goes to zero when the time goes to infinity. Okay, that's very clear. So for the unstable, we have to do it the same thing, but backwards in time. I mean, unstable means you are going away. So but as I have to define from the point, I have to choose that the time goes backwards in time so the unstable set is a set of points such the orbit starting at those points goes to the origin when the time goes to goes backwards to minus infinity. Okay. So with this definition, I mean, we still, I mean, that's very nice. So our previous example, it, it, it can be applied and, it, and we get the same lines, those lines verify it. But the thing is that with this definition, we get rid of the necessity of talking about the straight lines or whatever. So it, it's a dynamical definition. So we define the, the manifold uh, from the point. So well, know that these sets can be empty. So I don't need, for instance, in these points in the middle, 
So the set of points that in the future, time is going to infinity or backwards in time, they tend to zero. The set of points that do that is empty. Well, it's besides the point itself. Okay. So it is trivially there. So, well, not everybody's, I mean, these manifolds can exist or not. You need some uh, situation like hyperbolicity, you can guess. I mean, with this condition here, you don't have them. So, uh, well, as our applications will be in celestial mechanics, celestial mechanics, so it means usually it's a Hamiltonian or close to Hamiltonian in the sense that uh, in some situations in astrodynamics, you have a non-Hamiltonian perturbation of a Hamiltonian system. So you are not in a Hamiltonian setting any longer, but you're close to it. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, so for, I mean, this sentence is cut it. I'll, I'll have to fix the slide. Okay. So what is missing is that because of that, I will assume that the uh, hyperbolic things are subtles. And that's typical in Hamiltonian and systems close to Hamiltonian. Okay. So, well, so uh, the first thing in the generic conditions, now next I will give a theorem. It is possible to show that these invariant sets, I call them sets, I, I didn't say manifolds, because in principle, with my definition, I cannot say they are manifolds. They are sets that give rise to orbits going to the point, either forward or backwards in time. But under quite generic conditions, you can prove that they are, in fact, smooth manifolds. Okay. So in principle, let's start another typo here. Let's start with the case of hyperbolic points. So I mean, is, is a, an hyperbolic point is a point completely hyperbolic. So if I linearize the dynamics of the point, I have no center direction. So the eigenvalues are either positive, real, everything, all eigenvalues are real, and they are either positive or negative, okay? So, well, let's denote by uh, ES, uh, the stable, linear space or the linearization of the origin and EU, the unstable linear space. Well, as, as usual, I, I assume that the hyperbolic point uh, is located at the origin. So that's not restriction at all. And well, I have to, I, I need to refer to the dimensions of this space. So let me call M the dimension of the stable so space. So it means the unstable is N minus M. Okay. So, well, there's this theorem. Okay, well, there are, this is a very classical theorem. I would say it's very well known. So uh, if, if I have a vector field, differential equation, zero is an hyperbolic this point. And then I don't need anything, essentially. I don't need to add any condition that the vector field is smooth and that zero is an hyperbolic equilibrium point in the sense I've just defined, okay? Only with this, I can tell you that there exists an m-dimensional manifold, W s, and an n minus m-dimensional manifold, U, that would be the unstable. The hyperbolic point belongs to both of them, such that all these four conditions are uh, met. So first, the manifolds are invariant. I mean, this is a, a local invariant in the sense that this is a local theorem that happens in a neighborhood. Of, of the of the equilibrium point. So the second is that they are tangent to the linear spaces. So the, the stable manifold is tangent to the linear uh, stable manifold at the point. The same for the unstable one. Oh, sorry. And the definition uh, we gave before of invariant set of, of a stable and unstable set is, is met. So if a point belongs to this manifold, the stable one, then the orbit goes to the point when the time goes forward and it belongs to the unstable, the orbit goes to the point when the time goes backward in time. These manifolds are well, locally, this is a local theorem unique and they are the only ones satisfying these conditions. Okay, that's a, a standard theorem for, for invariant manifolds. Well, it's, uh, there are plenty of situations besides this one and there are plenty of theorems and you can play with the conditions. I mean, well, this is quite usual in dynamics. So, so I mean, if you Google it, you, you find hundreds of theorems for different situations, even for parabolic points. Oh. So uh, what I will do uh, today is I will work uh, only with a linear approximation. So, uh, and you, you'll see why. I mean, in next week I will use higher, I mean, 
I use the money for far away, so it won't be linear anymore. But I mean, as this is the first uh, part, I will focus on the, on, on the linear part. I will not survey all the theorems. At the end, I'll give you some references so you can go and, and find uh, theorems for other situations. And in the next week, uh, I won't prove the theorems, but I'll explain uh, the hypothesis, why they are needed, where they are needed, because they appear in the computation. So this will allow me to discuss a bit the theoretical part. Okay, so I'll do, let's say one application of the two examples is uh, to control a spacecraft near an unstable equilibrium point. Okay, so in principle, I'll choose a saddle center center point because it's plenty of them in, in astrodynamics, the residual three body problem and in perturbation the residual three body problem. I choose a point, I could do the same for a periodic orbit, but I choose a point in order to explain uh, easily uh, all the ideas and everything can be also readily transported to periodic orbits. So you, you, I mean, once you understand why we do, why or how we are doing it, you, you'll see it's pretty clear. So we assume we are close to the point. So let me do the first uh, trick. So linear approximation, let me tell you is good enough, okay? So you can complain and say, how do you know it's good enough? Uh, you are cheating, uh, blah, blah. So, but uh, of course, this, this includes an error in everything. And uh, I'll discuss that at the end, okay? So I, 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 for the moment, I mean, I have to start at some point. So let me start assuming that we are close enough to the point such that the linear approximations is gonna be good for what we are going. Okay. So we are in a six dimension phase space, saddle center center. And, uh, Let's see how we can visualize the dynamics near the point. So a standard trick to visualize the point is to choose suitable coordinate planes. So I'll choose the one plane will be the saddle plane and the other two planes will be the planes of the two centers, okay? So if I start a trajectory near the point, the dynamics is very easily described like this. So that's the saddle behavior and the center behavior. Okay, well, imagine this point is L1, L2, L3, uh, any other situation, any other point, they all belong to this category. So we want to keep something there. So uh, for the moment, let me assume the model is, is exact. So, so we could discuss also, I mean, how good is this model for real problems, but not now. So let's assume the model is exact, but of course, we don't put the spacecraft exactly at the point with zero error. We make some little error when we put it there. So because of that error, in that plane, I'm moving away. These two planes, I don't care much because I'm simply moving around. So, so distance will not increase, but that one increases. So this means that they have to do something. Otherwise, the, the, the probe will be sent away. So I have to do something. So, well, several options. One option is to use control theory. This is, I, I won't do that. I mean, uh, control theory means to define some objective function uh, that you want to optimize that has to do with the distance to the point and the fuel used, blah, blah. And then looking for a control that controls appear as a parameter in the differential equation because they, they correspond to, to giving some impulse or doing something. And then you try to solve that by optimization techniques. So I won't do it. So I will use the manifolds, okay? And I will use them in, in a linear way, I mean, I mean, I can do the same uh, talk, explain the same thing using nonlinear manifolds, but that would be a bit more complex, but it's the same idea. So let me focus on the linear case. Okay, so, well, here dynamics is very clear. So as we understand dynamics, let's try to use this knowledge to derive a suitable control strategy. Okay, first, I have to explain what's a, what, I mean, what is a maneuver? So what can I do with a spacecraft? Well, it depends on the kind of propulsion that the, the satellite is using. So uh, today I will use two kinds of propulsion. This is the first, I mean, in the first block, I talk about the first kind of propulsion, which is the standard one, the chemical thruster, the rocket, okay? So this is based on, on uh, burning some chemicals such that you produce thrust by ejecting uh, high speed uh, gases. Okay, so, and then, I mean, action-reaction principle 
is giving you a push when you do that. So it's uh, the simplest way. So, well, I mean, if you compare, I mean, that's a comment simply to explain that, uh, well, these types of engines are the classical ones. They are, as a good thing, they are the lightest and they have the highest thrust. I mean, the, the highest push, but they are the less efficient of them. Okay, so that would be another discussion. I mean, if you have curiosity, ask me at the end and I'll explain why this happens. But they are, I mean, they have been used a lot. Uh, so I'll use that as a first option, okay? Well, I mean, uh, a chemical thruster gives a big push on a short time. I mean, I think that a chemical thruster, once you have ejected all the mass you are carrying to, to be burned, your engine is over. You cannot do anything else because, I mean, uh, it's, it's action reaction thing. So when you, end, when you end up uh, throwing away mass in order to be pushed, by the, it's over. So, uh, well, so they only act for short times. You only give some uh, pushes, short pushes. And because uh, they are for a minute, for instance, I mean, uh, 30 seconds, one minute uh, in our units. So a good model for the action of a thruster is that simply say that your spacecraft or your satellite has experimented a jump in its velocities. Because I mean, the amount of uh, space you move uh, during the push is very short compared with the jumping velocities you get because the thrust is quite powerful. Okay, so we will think uh, of a maneuver as a jump in phase space. This jump only will only affect velocities, not positions. So this means that to control, that's what I can do. I can change my velocity, but not my position. Of course, there's a limit. I mean, that, that's, you, you cannot do an infinite jump, of course, that there's a limit, there's a range. But then uh, the key point is this blue sentence, uh, which is the following. So we have a saddle plane and two center planes. Every plane is 2D, that's the six dimensions. Velocities is a, an, a 3D plane. And positions a 3D plane again. So assume they are in general position. So they are not parallel to each other. So it's a general position. Then this means that the jump takes place in a given direction, we d 1D, in every of these three planes. So I will focus on the saddle. So I will repeat it only for the saddle. This is only true for the centers, but for them, I don't care at this point for the center. So let me focus on the saddle, okay? Because the saddle is uh, 2D and the velocity is a space is 3D. So this gives me a line, a direction. I think that's clear. Okay. Let me make a, a graphical discussion of this. So that's the saddle. Those are the two. I mean, this is like coordinates of the saddle. Nothing. So if the direction I'm discussing, uh, let, let me assume is, uh, I'll take this. Oh, so, sorry. You see my mouth, right? I'm, I'm using this, this straight line. Imagine this is the direction. So this means I can do a maneuver and jump in that direction from the, from any point I am, I can move in that direction, okay? I cannot move in that plane. I cannot jump to any place because I can only change three coordinates, three velocities, and I'm in six dimensions. That's the key of the trick. You want me to talk more about that or clear? So one second. So you are saying that you are on the upper and you have control to jump on the lower. Is this is? Yeah, so let, let, let me make an example. For instance, imagine uh, this is my, uh, the orbit of my spacecraft, right? So that as the time uh, goes by, I'm moving away, 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 and I arrive here. Yeah? Uh, yeah. At some point I decided I'm too far away. I have to react, I have to do something. So then I do a maneuver in a suitable direction such that I, jump 
I move myself to this place. Yes, yes. And then I'm happy with the result, yeah? Because the dynamics will bring me back. Yeah. Yes. So if, so essentially this plane is neither positions nor velocities, okay? So this plane, so the, this is what I was saying that these are in general positions. This plane is the subtle plane that mixes positions and velocities, right? So let me go here, sorry. Okay, I have a saddle which is 2D and two center which is 2D that makes the six. And velocities are 3D. So if they are in general position, which in fact happens in, in the relativity body problem and in all these problems, it always happens. They are in general position. So they are not parallel. Yeah. So because of that, it means that when you change your velocity, in fact, you are moving on a line on the saddle plane. So in other words, if this thing were inside the velocity plane, then I could jump anywhere. Yes. Yeah, but that I cannot do. Uh, that's the idea of controlling. So let, let me, I, I'll repeat with a different, uh, with a solar sail in a moment. So I'll do it twice. In a solar sail is, there's different because you don't have this big push that you have with the rocket. So, but it's the same kind of idea, right? So essentially the idea is that, let me go here. The idea is that when you change your three velocities, if you are looking at your positions here, when you have changes velocities, you have changed your positions in the three planes, okay? If you are here when you change velocities, you go to a different place. If you are here, you go to a different place, and you are here, you go to a different place. Yeah? Is that correct? So the key point is choosing your jumping velocities, so your direction for the maneuver, such that, of course, you don't want to go, uh, I don't know, down there, that would be too bad. You, you, want, you want to find this line, the stable manifold, okay? I mean, usually targeting to a point is more difficult than targeting to a manifold. A manifold is bigger, so it's easy to target. Yeah, so if, if I can move in a direction, as I was saying before, and if I'm here, I can target the manifold. I cannot target the point. And that's very easy to imagine. I mean, uh, imagine you have an unstable uh, point, like, uh, so I mean, probably most of you have played with an inverted pendulum, right? The, the, this kind of toy when you are a kid that you want to keep uh, upside, so you move your hand such that you keep controlling it up, right? So, in principle, uh, the, the idea is that when you kick, if you want to do it with a kick, it's a jumping velocity, when you kick it, uh, in principle, you can change the velocity of the inverted pendulum, that, that's what you do when you kick it, but you don't change the position. So if you visualize the pendulum, the phase space of the pendulum, so let me, I had one plotted for this thing, yeah. So you want to arrive here, but you are moving away. When you kick and you change velocities, I mean, here velocity is in the vertical line, the horizontal is positions. When you kick, it means that you can choose in which place you want your pendulum to be because you kick and you change velocity, okay? You cannot change the position because it's a kick. So if uh, you are, let's say here, and you are going away, you have to give a kick such that your new velocity is that velocity. And then automatically the pendulum goes up and turns to the point.
It's better or worse? No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So it's, it's essentially, I mean, uh, I mean, the idea, and that idea, I'll use it also next week for transport and things like that, is that the, the manifolds organize the dynamics. So they, they organize local dynamics around the point, as I'm discussing uh, here on the other example, and they organize transport between different regions. So you can take advantage of them. So usually, if you want to go somewhere, uh, in the example here, if you are here and you want to go back to the point, you can point to the point. You can try to do a maneuver to go straight. But it is usually more difficult than to look for the manifold, because it's, the manifold is much bigger than the point. It has more dimensions. So probably there are zones of the manifolds which are close to, closer to you. So you can, instead of going to the point you, that, that's your final destination, you go to the manifold and the dynamics will carry you to your final destination. So that, that, that's the idea. It, it's very simple. It's really very simple. Okay. So it's uh, to, to understand how manifolds organize the, the, the dynamics and then to use uh, this knowledge uh, to design uh, maneuvers or, or, or things taking advantage of that knowledge. So in, in, in that case, for instance, let me discuss again this pendulum. If I'm in this place, I'm going away, but I want to stay up. That's the upper equilibrium. I want to stay. Okay. I can use a control algorithm to, to, to go back. That's possible. I mean, and there is optimization and then that, well, there are lots of things and it works. I'm not claiming it doesn't, it works. But there's another point of view that's the one I'm explaining is that if you understand why you are going away and how is the dynamics around, you see what you have to do. You realize you're in the wrong place of phase space. You have a wrong velocity. You need another velocity because then the phase space will play in your favor. So you kick your... Uh... The, the, uh, Angel, there is a question in the chat. I don't see it. Uh, uh, yeah, I can read it to you if you want. Uh, yeah. In, in the full six D dimensional system, are you trying to target the four center manifold of the equilibrium, thus trying to get onto the fifth dimensional center stable manifold? Or are you targeting the equilibrium uh, point itself, so only trying to get to the one? Uh, dimensional stable manifold. I'm, I'm targeting the stable manifold. That's the only thing I'm doing. I'm not, I'm, I'm at this point of the discussion, I'm ignoring the center directions. Yeah. So you can complain of that, uh, of that thing I'm doing. And in a moment, I will discuss what happens with the center directions. Okay. But first, I want to explain that, I mean, uh, this thing, I mean, as the important, uh, objects in the space that I'm going away are the stable and unstable manifolds. I can, let's say, uh, control them if I'm able to change velocities. This has a side effect on the center directions. But at the moment, I'm not discussing. I'll do it in a, in a moment. Yeah? OK. Uh, I think I have answered. I'm not sure. Yes, for me, yes. But, but... I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, certainly, you you have a, a mirror. You won't go exactly to the stable manifold. So, so sorry. I kick something. Uh, yeah. I was trying to see the chat, and I kick. Yeah. Is now back. Yes. 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 Uh, my question is, uh, certainly we will have a mirror to go to the stable manifold. What happens, uh, you have to correct and try many steps in order to go to the stable manifolds. And what happens if you get far from the, uh, in the position space? I mean, if you go far away. Yes. Then you need a nonlinear approximation to the manifold. You're gonna still play the same game. I mean, this game, I, I don't need to be close. In fact, I'm asking to be close because I'm using uh, a straight lines. I mean, I'm using linear approximation to the manifold, so I need to be close. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, if these manifolds bend and I know them, mm -hmm. I could do the same. I can apply the same ideas. In fact, I mean, next week I will use manifolds far away from the origin, which are bended 
to do transport. And then I will, I, I will use this. Another thing is that, uh, and that's true for, for a spacecraft dynamics, when you want to stay to a point, it means you don't want to go far away. You want to stay. So, so usually you don't wait too much before doing the maneuver. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, that I have explained. Here I have some reference about this. Now let me go to the second example, which is a solar sail. So a uh, solar sail is a, well, here I have a picture of one. So it's a small spacecraft that has a big sail, which is a very light surface that reflects light. So when you reflect light, the light has momentum. So you get a little push for reflecting the light. And, and that's the, 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 your, your propulsion. So that's a very, very small uh, force, very, very small. But on, on, I mean, on the other hand, it acts continuously and is free. So you don't have to carry fuel or something. So it has some interest for some kind of missions. So you cannot do exactly the same that you do with a rocket. So that's a different thing and it has a different purpose. Okay, so, I mean, this is not science fiction. So several solar sails have been in space. Here I'm listing them. And uh, they are all experimental. So, I mean, they are in a space only to, to play with them, see how they work. So there's no mission accomplished with a solar sail, I mean, as, as far as I know today, okay? So, well, I mean, I, I will skip that. So you will have the, 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 the slides. So uh, first, I'll do a very simple model because I mean, this model can, can, can be improved, but I won't do it. I mean, it's simply, I want to explain the, the main idea of how it works. So I will assume that the sail is perfectly flat. I mean, uh, that's not exactly true. Uh, and it's perfectly reflecting. So that's not true either. Okay, but uh, well, let's, let's do it. So essentially, uh, a sail depends on several parameters. The orientation is two parameters. We are in, in the space, three dimensions, and the orientation of a flat surface is given by two angles. I mean, you can take them in different ways, they have different origins, and, but it's two angles. It's like um, a point in the sphere orientation. And then is the side lightness number, which is essentially the push you get from the sail. That's the other. So this has to do with the size, of the sail and with the total mass of the of everything okay so and that gives you so essentially this is a sort of let me call this the acceleration you it's not acceleration exactly but it has to do with the acceleration you get from the sail okay so well there's some uh, definition so I mean, if you want to imagine what a solar sail is, uh, so, uh, I mean, to get a reasonable push, which is this thing, if the sail weights 100 kilos, then uh, you see how big the sail has to be. Okay, that's a difficult engineering problem. This is a book about solar sails, so it's at the end, so, so you can... So dynamical model, let me use the simplest one, is the rest of the three-body problem. The primaries are sun and earth, but with an extra force, which is I will assume that my particle is not only attracted by earth and sun, but it gets a push uh, that is given by the sun. By the, the, the... So uh, if, we write, if we write the equations, I mean, that's a bit, uh, now, now it's irrelevant. So this first uh, block up to here, this is the rest of the three body problem. And this term that starts with beta, is the push you get from the, from the sail. And is a normal vector to the sail that is given, blah, blah. It, it's, it's easy, I mean, it's, but it's a bit, uh, I mean, boring to do the math, but it's, 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 it's kind of, okay. So in principle, uh, before putting the sail, the RTVP had five equilibrium points. If the sail is small, well, we are perturbing. This is an example of non-Hamiltonian perturbation. In general, the effect of the sail is non-Hamiltonian. For some orientations, it is Hamiltonian, but, but some other it is not. So, well, the points are displaced. 
uh, uh, according to orientation of the sale, the beta, blah, blah. So let me go straight to the application so you see what we will do. So one application, one of the most uh, important, I mean, and this is uh, one of the purposes for the solar sail, is to observe the, the sun. I mean, having an accurate and continuous observation of the sun is very good uh, to, uh, we want to uh, know in advance if a big geomagnetic storm is coming from the sun because it affects our communications. So from time to time that happens, it even appears in the newspaper that there's a big uh, geomagnetic storm in the sun. So there's a lot of charged particles that are, uh, I mean, they don't travel at the light speed. They travel, I mean, it is, is charged particles with mass. So, so they travel from the sun to us. And when they arrive to the earth, they interfere with satellite communications. And, and, and that's something that we want to know in advance. Yeah. So, I mean, usually now we have an, a, a, we have some satellites near L1 doing this observation. Okay, they are in a hell orbit. I commented a bit about hell orbits, I mean, uh, on Tuesday. But a solar sail gives you another option. A solar sail means that if the solar sail is moved a bit sideways, the equilibrium point, so where all the forces compensate, moves away from the Earth's sun line. And it's in one side. Yeah. Also, because of the, the gravity of the sun is somehow diminished, I mean, reduced, because the, the, the sun is attracted by the sun, but it's also pushed away by the, by the photons from the sun. The equilibrium point is displaced for, towards the sun. So the equilibrium point, L1, moves outside the Earth's own line and it goes to one side. And that's fantastic for two reasons. One, I'm closer to the sun. That's always better if you want to do observations. I mean, and the second is that because I'm outside uh, from the, this line, it means that when from the Earth I look to the sail, I'm not looking at the solar disk. If this, was on, if this were on the line, I could not get communications because if I had a parabolic antenna pointing to the side, which is, lies in the middle of the solar disk, I will only get the noise coming from the sun and, and nothing else because that's much stronger than, than the, the emitter in the sail. So in this way, the sail is not orbiting, it's, it's fixed. This is an equilibrium point. The sail, the sail is a static at one side of the sun, okay? It can also be used uh, to, to study the north I mean, the poles. So you can hover like an helicopter, but at some distance uh, on the poles and have a continuous monitoring. But that, that's more difficult. That's not the, let's say, a star application. That's the star application. Okay. Now, another one that's appealing is uh, if you want to go to Mars, because I mean, you know that it's, it's becoming more and more fashionable to go to Mars. So there's one problem that is that because our periods are different, Earth and Mars, from time to time, we get in opposite sides of the sun. So this means that you cannot, I mean, communications are lost. You cannot uh, communicate. So one option to keep continuous communication is uh, using uh, this idea to put a solar sail over the earth. So such that the solar radiation pressure compensates for the gravity of the earth. So you have an equilibrium point up here so you have a continuous vision of Mars. So you can put a relay of communications and keep it. But, uh, okay, so same as before. Let's use, the, let's use dynamical system tools, okay? So I will focus on one of these equilibrium for the solar sail, and I'm gonna discuss the controlling. Now, it will be a difference. I mean, there's no jumping velocities. I don't have big pushes. And then, yeah, well, so in principle, now I will go a bit faster, but I, as I have explained the ideas and I hope clearly, uh, now I can go faster. We are in three dimensions, three positions, three velocities, three degrees of freedoms. And these uh, points are center, saddle, uh, saddle, center, center, sorry. So the dynamics near the point is, is the one I discussed before. But uh, well, uh, here I cannot jump because my, my push is, is very small. Okay, so what can I do? Well, the trick here is that uh, is the following. So I can move the sail. That's the only thing I can do. That's my only possible maneuver is change the orientation of the sail. That's the only uh, option I have. And what's the effect of moving the sail in phase space? 
If I move the rotation axis cells, what happens in phase space is that the equilibrium point moves from one point to another. Okay, the equilibrium point is produced by the cancellation of gravitation of sun, earth, and the solar radiation pressure. So if I change the orientation of the sail, I'm changing the, 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 the radiation pressure on the sail, so that the place where all these forces cancel changes. Okay, so I can do that, I can change. That's a fantastic trick. So, well, imagine uh, that's the point. So I'm, I'm looking at the saddle, later I'll look at the centers. I, I promise that, so I'm looking at the saddle. So uh, that's the saddle and that's, well, I started and the sail arrives there and it starts moving away because of the of the situation. Okay, so the point is that I can change the orientation of the sail and move these points to different places. And immediately you realize that that's a nice idea. Yeah. That's fantastic. If I can change the orientation of my sail and I can move this saddle from here to there, the natural dynamics will send the sail back to this. Now this is not the manifold because this is the manifold. But once I'm arriving here, I can restart the previous orientation of the sail and that's it, okay? So of course I have to do it right. I mean, if uh, not any maneuver is acceptable, I can do it wrong. I mean, that's an example of a wrong, of a wrong maneuver, huh? okay? So, well, now uh, that this is, I think it's clear, let me go to the center. We have to pay some care with the centers. This also applies before, but I mean, I, I skip it to discuss it only here because, uh, well, I only want to do it in one place. Well, if I move the fixed point, I also change where the center is. I move it. So, okay, that's that looks good. But uh, if you start thinking about it, uh, it is possible to choose the rotations in a bad way such that you are spiraling out. Okay, so you have to be a bit careful with that. But the, the point is that, I mean, that, that's very easy. I mean, if you give little rotations, different centers, and you can change the center, you, you can organize this such that you spiral away. So that's what you want, that's what you don't want. Okay, so, well, we have to choose the orientation of the sail such that the saddle behaves the way we want and the centers are not that bad as the worst case. So, uh, well, if we think a bit, the, the, the condition to have a well-behaved center is that uh, if that's my center, that's my first equilibrium point, so I move for a while, it means that I want the second center here in that sector, because then my new rotation will, will enter. And I don't want it in that part because then I will increase the distance to the initial point, okay? So I'm only writing this to convince you that I can convert this in conditions, in formulas. So I, I want, uh, the details are in papers and places. So, so at the end you have references, but it's something you can do. Okay, so well, at the end, you use all these and you construct uh, the, the control. So let me show you uh, simulations and then I'll explain about well, some comments at the end. Okay, so uh, I will only uh, focus on Geostorm. I I've done it for Polar Observer. First, I put it in the slides, but then I realized it was too much and I forgot to erase the, that, that, that sentence there. Okay, so we'll only discuss you stuff. So, well, this is a Monte Carlo simulation, that's a standard. So I start uh, with random initial conditions. I program a simulator, I program a control, and I simply launch to see what happens, okay? So that we do it for 30 years uh, and see what happens. Well, that, that's uh, how it behaves. I'll, I'll show plots in a moment because the plots are nice. So it means that no error means that to assume that when I ask the solar sail for an orientation, that's what I get exactly. And that I know exactly where the solar sail is. I mentioned this because in practice, you don't know exactly where your spacecraft is, you know it approximately. 
And when you ask for an orientation, you don't get it exactly. You get it approximately. Okay. So, and these two things for a real application has to be taken into account. I mean, how sensitive is your strategy from the uncertainty in these in these quantities? So here there are simulations between different uh, errors. So we we start increasing the error till the, the method fails. So it was two degrees, two point two degrees, which is quite high. But let me show you the the dynamics of a sale. So the first three plots. This is without errors. Everything is exact. So this is the in the synodical coordinates of the resistance three body problem. This is x y x z x z. That's what you get. But this is in the saddle center center projection. So this starts at that point, and then the the control produces. I mean, if you realize of this, this is, if you remember, oh, this, that kind of control. Yeah. Those are the two centers. So in this center, that's where the trajectory starts. The control, I mean, really reduces it and brings it to the point. But not in this. It keeps that one keeps oscillating. Okay. The reason for that is that with a solar sail, you only have two parameters of control. I mean, when you do, I mean, a maneuver with a rocket, you have three directions to the maneuver. But with a sail, you only have two angles to orientate. So when you only have, because you have only two angles, you can you cannot task for many things. So I could bring this uh, center to the origin like this, but then that one would behave uh, not not so nice. Okay, but still it keeps the thing bounded. So I mean we we have to do some some kind of minimum square uh, problem to to try to control everything, but it it works. So, and then it, this is with the errors. I mean, uh, this is very nice and you tend to the point, but when you have errors, that's not so nice because, well, you cannot reach to a point because you are doing little errors in, in maneuvers. That is also interesting. That's how the solar sail moves. So this is the two angles. So there's one angle that really moves between two values while the other really converges to a point. Well, that, that that's, how the angles are defined. Okay, so let me uh, do the conclusions. Okay, for instance, understanding the dynamics uh, and this means understanding dynamics means having the manifolds to explain how the how the trajectories are nearby allows you to really control trajectories. That that's one of the points. I mean, manifolds are, use, are useful for many things, and that's in, in a space dynamics, that's one of them. I mean, knowing them allows you to take advantage of them, and, and they are really useful. So we did it for 30 years, I mean, to put a number, it could, I think, I'm sure it, it runs for long. Okay, well, these uh, ideas serve for other things. For instance, and that's, it's only one as light, so I didn't want to discuss it. This is uh, this is a kind of of uh, well we call it surfing, but it's uh, so the idea is the following. This is how to go from one place to, to another place using a sail and using local invariant manifolds. So imagine uh, we start here in the saddle one. So this is an equilibrium point that's in hyperbolic. So it's a saddle. So you move away. And then the idea is you change your orientation, you displace the point such that, but now you don't want to stay, you want to move away. So you displace the point in the, with the opposite idea such that the point gets there, so you do this. And then you displace the point and you do this. So you can uh, organize a transfer along, I mean, a, a, a line of fixed points by simply understanding how the manifolds are, are, are located, okay? That's what happens in the center. So, uh, and finally, well, I think it's only references there. Yeah. So, finally, and, and th this is one of the goals today is that I mean, I've used linear manifolds to do the things cleanly, nicely, blah, blah. But 
In fact, if the manifold is linear or not, for, for all the concepts I've explained, it's irrelevant. I mean, if the manifold is nonlinear, we will talk about nonlinear manifolds I mean, next week. If the manifold is nonlinear, computations will be harder, yeah, but not ideas, not concepts, and not advantages of, the, of, of, all, of all this. So, I mean, I've put some uh, reference. I've tried not to put not too many about these things. So it's, uh, well, I think that's all. I and mean, I think I'm, I'm finishing on time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let's applaud. Let's uh, applaud. <laughs> Okay, so we're, we're open to question, more question. Yeah, I have, a, I have a quick question actually about uh, the first uh, the first method with the rocket. So, uh, yeah. because I think it's very difficult to be on the stable manifold, right? So what I mean is that you move close to the stable manifold, but then the flow again will eventually bring you away from the stable manifold. And, and you keep going and you keep doing it. Okay, so you keep doing it uh, until until your rocket uh, doesn't work anymore because that is a fact. Yeah, but that's what happens. I mean, usually to okay. control a rocket near an unstable place, periodic orbit point or whatever, you have to do a maneuver every month, every week, depending on the level of instability. And that's because on one side, you cannot land with zero error on the manifold mm -hmm. on the point. That's one thing. And the second is that your model is not exact either. Mm -hmm. Your model is not exact. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You could do it for your model. The reality, I mean, you know parameters with 10 digits, not with more. So, so, so uh, at the end is a loop. So when you realize you are going away, you, you compute your maneuver, you do it until next time. Okay. So is it convenient to have, you know, this is a, like a curiosity, but is it convenient to have a smaller maneuver frequently or or a larger maneuver once in a while like i mean i don't know like maybe you know practical practice what people well do. it is the point is that you cannot do maneuver i didn't mention that but the point is that you cannot do maneuvers uh, i mean with uh, short time intervals because when you do a maneuver you do there's an error in the maneuver the maneuver is not is not done exactly so your your rocket i mean you ask for a uh, 10 seconds of burn but the push you get, you are not sure. You are almost sure the push you will get, but not sure. And also the orientation. The orientation uh, will also have little error. So once you do the maneuver, the thing you have to do is to check what has happened. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this means to, to measure again the position of the, and that takes some time. To measure the position of the space, that takes some time, and then realize that the maneuver has been perfect, half perfect. And or, or whatever, and then there's another. I mean, so this means it's. Uh, of course, that depends on where the satellite is. It's not the same if this uh, rocket is in the L3 or in L1 of L2 of the Earth Moon, which is close, so we can measure very easily, or it is orbiting Jupiter uh, between the moons of Jupiter. So I mean, uh, things are more uh, difficult because it's far away. But, Thank you. question the students can ask don't be shy i guess i'll have a question then Go. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, i i'd like to know uh, uh, about the solar sails um how I mean, the, the 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 influence of the sun and the reflection and the guidance of the the, the sail, how big it is in if, when comparing to the gravitational. I mean, if you're uh, Earth, Earth, Earth and Sun, uh, uh, you are close to the sun. But if you are Jupiter and Sun, or even uh, uh, further away, like imagine we we yeah. want to sail until Neptune. How? Yes. So uh, yes, uh, this is the beta. So let me share again the, I don't know, when I share, I, I, I lose you. So I don't know what, why this happens. But, well, we're still here, we promise. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let me uh, go. Uh, I think it's the view. You can change your view and you can see us. 
is uh, depending uh, on the bottom of the view. On the view. Yeah, on the upper right, there is view. There is an upper right corner and you can change the view if uh, sometime you should uh, yeah. well, the, there is a choice there is a choice if you want to see just uh, yourself uh, or okay. well, let, let, let me go okay. i'll investigate i'm too old for this thing okay. so, i'll investigate this so uh, this is this beta parameter okay the beta parameter measures the push you get from the sail compared with the solar gravitational attraction at one astronomical unit from the sun. Mm. So this means if you are at the same distance of the sun as the earth, one astronomical unit, mm -hmm. and beta were one, if beta were one, it means that the push you get from the sail equals the gravity pull you, you suffer from the sun. So with beta one, you could stop without orbiting, not falling to the sun, not going away. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, yes. And then this beta would be like, a, 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 when we're far away, this beta would decrease. The beta decreases. Okay. Not, not the beta, I mean, think, I mean let, let me show you the, the equations. Okay. Uh, the beta is always the same value because it's the push you get when you are at one astronomical unit. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so then th there's this uh, R distance. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it now goes with the square of the distance. I see, I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so that uh, still, I mean, a uh, solar sail is, is believed uh, to be the most efficient way to send a probe outside the solar system. Mm -hmm. That's still, I mean, it's. Uh, and oh, okay, let me uh, a warning. I mean, I've explained how to control with invariant manifolds, yeah, but not everybody is doing this. Huh? I mean, there are other methods for doing control and, and doing, I mean, there's uh, lots of people doing research on, on optimization, control algorithms. So this is not the only way. Okay, so so I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it as, as a way of understanding how uh, invariant manifolds and knowing uh, what happens to them is useful to understand. What, what's going on and to derive techniques and do things. But that, that's what I'm doing. And, and in fact, it's useful. I mean, invariant manifolds have been used in a space for, for missions too, but it's not the only option. Yes. 